Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over an updated Game Week 1 draft, how I'm currently looking for the new FPL season. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Leave a comment, what is your Game Week 1 squad looking like? Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, I've had another goalkeeper change. I've now gone for Jordan Pickford in goal. Their first fixture is at home to Fulham, um, but they're just like first four or five fixtures aren't actually that bad. And for a 4.5 mil keeper, um, you know he's obviously proven himself in the Prem internationally and stuff. I don't think he's a terrible option. This could easily change as well. It depends how much the new United keeper is going to cost. If he's like 5 mil, then that might change my name. Uh, that might change my mind because then I'll probably get rid of Luke Shaw, who's 5.5 mil, and I'll be able to say 0.5 there. So there's, again, these transfers that are like coming in that could definitely uh, change how my team is looking. But as of right now, I do have Pickford in goal. Um, again, goalkeepers don't necessarily get you that many points unless they're playing for like a top uh, top side. And even if they are like your Edisons and your Allisons, because they're so good uh, defensively, well, at least City were last season, they're not going to make that many save points either. And if they just concede one annoying goal, they're just going to mainly get like two points or maybe one point if they concede two. So uh, it's sometimes better having like a, a cheaper keeper just so they, they can rack up the save points and stuff. And they will keep clean sheets every now and again. There's always the penalty save as well that they could get. But uh, as of right now, I'm quite happy with Pickford in goal. But again, that could easily change depending on um, the new United keepers uh, price tag, which again, should hopefully be revealed very, very soon. But anyway, Pickford in goal. At the back, we've got four. Uh, we've got four. We've gone for a 4-4-2 formation this time. So yeah, I've got Luke Shaw at the back, who's got Wolves at home. Esther Pinion, who's got Luton at home. Gabriel, who's got Forrest at home. And then Trent, who's also got Chelsea away. So I do like this drafting because it does allow me to, to bring Trent in. It it is four at the back and there's obviously so many good midfielder options but it depends because like Trent is the same price as around like Erdegaard, uh, Saka, Martinelli and stuff like that. It, it's just kind of like which player would you rather have and I think that Trent's new position even though he's still listed as a defender, he's he's getting forward so much more. Um, the chances he's creating are a lot higher and stuff like that. So I think this season he's going to be an absolute uh, masterclass in that midfield. We saw obviously elements of it at the end of last season, how good he was. Um, so yeah, I, I think with with the new position he's playing, plus the added bonus of potentially getting clean sheets and stuff, um, which are obviously always going to benefit him, I think that Trent is going to have a really good season. I think it, it's going to be like a massive deciding factor how FBL goes in the first five weeks, whether you have him or not, because if you don't have Trent, you'll have like probably another eight mil uh, like midfielder or something like that. And obviously if they pop off and you don't have Trent, then you've done really well. But if you don't have Trent and then he does really well, because obviously he's going to be owned by quite a few players and managers. It's going to be one of those. I think Trent's going to be one of the biggest deciding factors because it's not going to be like Haaland and stuff because everyone has Haaland. Salah might be another deciding factor as well. It's just how do you get Salah into your team with the likes of Trent and Haaland as well. It's a really tough one, but either way, that's why Trent's in my team. Gabriel, again, I've already been over why he's a really good option. Five mil uh, defender for Arsenal. And their fixtures are just so good at the start of the season. He should be playing um, every single game in that uh, starting lineup. So, yeah, Gabriel, I think, is arguably the best Arsenal asset to have in terms of defence. Uh, Ramsdale is also good, but Gabriel also has that really good goal threat as well. So I think that he's going to be really good on set pieces and stuff. Uh, Est opinion, I think, that is going to be in pretty much every single draft as well. Um, he's just such a good player to have. Uh, their fixtures are ridiculously good at the start of the season. And as well as that... You know, 5 mil is not that bad. You know, he was a little bit cheaper last season. He was always going to get a price rise. But 5 mil for Est opinion, I don't think you can really complain with that. I think he's a definite bargain. And then obviously, last but not least, we do have Luke Shaw, who is 5.5 mil. I really like Shaw as an option. But like I say, if the new United keeper is 5 mil, I don't think he'll be 4.5. I think that'd be way too crazy because he's definitely going to be the new number one. We know that for a fact. So, yeah, he could be 5 mil. I think 5 mil will be the price point. And if he is... Then obviously you save that 0.5 on Luke Shaw. Of course, Luke Shaw does have the set piece creation and uh, the assist potential and stuff like that. But for 0.5 uh, cheaper, I think um, you could easily get rid of um, Shaw there. And then you could probably just play like a 3-5-2 uh, and, and just get rid of Luke Shaw and then obviously have Trent instead. And obviously the, th the funds that you'd use for Luke Shaw, you can easily bring into like a, a new midfielder or something like that. So uh, yeah, I think we'll have to see what happens with that situation. But as of right now, this is this is who I'm going with at the back. So yeah, Pickford, Shaw, Estepinion, Gabriel and Trent. So that's the midfield. Well, that's the defenders going on to the midfielders. Uh, it's pretty much template to be fair. We've gone for Rashford uh, we've gone for Saka. We've gone for Matoma and we've gone for Bruno Fernandes. So uh, yeah, Rashford and Bruno, I think I can't really pick between them really. And I know that there is always the idea of having another Arsenal asset midfield, but that would mean that I'd have to get rid of Gabriel. And I do really want an Arsenal defender or some form of Arsenal defense in my, um, 
in my starting draft just simply because their opening fixtures are so good. Um, so yeah, we've gone um, we've gone Rashford and Bruno. Uh, obviously, Bruno on penalties, 90 minute man. He's gonna be playing every single game. Never like misses a game at all. He was injured last season and still played. Uh, and then Rashford, uh, obviously, his stats are just so good. Um, I feel like he will get. Uh, even better this season as well. I don't know. I think I think that United are now a lot more gelled under Ten Hag. I think that with with Mount being a signing, I think it will generally benefit them. And uh, they're going to make a couple other signings as well, most likely. It depends if they do bring in a striker. If they bring in a striker, then that will also change things because, like, which United assets do you have? Um, so, yeah, again, this is why we have to wait for transfers before we uh, we, we definitely lock in our game we won squad. But, uh, yeah, we have gone Rashford and Fernandes there. I've gone Saka over the other, other Arsenal mid midfielders. He should still be on penalties, and I just think he's so much more creative. Martinelli is obviously cheaper and did look really, really good at the end of last season. And I'm a little bit worried about not having the same with Erdegaard as well, to be fair. Uh, but, you know, Saka is going to get more minutes and stuff. You know, you do have that Trossard rotation with Martinelli. So even though he is cheaper, I think that's also going to come into play. And I'd rather have the player with more minutes, especially because he should be on penalties as well. So, yeah, that's why I've gone Saka. And the Matoma, same as Estepinian, had a really good season last season. Fixtures are really good at the start of the season. And, uh, yeah, Brighton just looked like a different team um, under uh, under the new manager. So, yeah, quite happy with that midfield. Obviously, it's super tempting plate um but yeah i kind of like the the look of it and then up top obviously super template as well we've got harland who's obviously my captain burnley away have to have him in the, in the squad and then we've gone for gabriel jesus as well uh there is something else that i was kind of thinking about is like dropping jesus into like a 4.5 mil striker and then bringing in like erdegaard or martinelli and playing a 4-5-1 that you could do with this draft and i quite like it as well to be fair um, I don't think there's much wrong with it uh, we'll, we'll have a look at it in a second but I'll just quickly go over the sub bench we've got Ariola, Botman who's got Villa at home uh, and then obviously the midfield and the, the forward it doesn't really matter uh, out of these two they're just random players that you know are both 4.5 mil each but yeah Botman he could be Bell and I could get 0.5 there I feel like if you know I do I do bring in the United keeper and he is five um, or something then um you know, I'd, I'd probably just do that. And then, yeah, go for the three uh, at the back and then maybe bring in another midfielder. But uh, that's how it looks right now. But yeah, the um, the the four five one formation would go something like this. So I'd get rid of Jesus um, and bring in a, a 4.5 million striker. Let's just bring in Sims. I know that he's um, uh, not... Uh, I don't even think he's registered now. Uh, let me just bring in a 4.5 mil striker real quick. Just simply because um, I, I do want to... Have a look at this 4-5-1 because I've seen a few people kind of talking about it. And it does look quite nice. Uh, let's just bring in, I don't know, uh, this guy. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And then um, that would allow me to have 3.5 mil in the bank. So I could get rid of, um, you know, Baptiste or something. Have 8 mil there. So I could bring in Martinelli. Um, another option, obviously, you could do is you could... Um, get rid of Botman and bring in a, a different player as well. So let me just quickly bring in Martinelli here, see what he looks like um, in, in the squad. So that's with Martinelli in the squad. So that'd be a 4-5-1. So you'd have Gabriel Estepinion, Trent, and Shaw. Then you'd have Saka, Martinelli, Matoma, um, uh, Bruno Fernandes and Rashford. And then you just have Haaland up top. So that'd be a 4-5-1. The other thing you could do is drop uh, Botman for Bell. Um, who's obviously a formal player who should play as well. Like, there's no reason he shouldn't play. Uh, that gives you an extra 0.5 mil in the bank, so you could upgrade your Martinelli to uh, the likes of Erdegaard instead if you wanted to. Just, just a bit more of a luxury, really, uh, having more minutes and stuff. Um, or you could bring in, you know, any other midfielder as well. You could bring in like a Mount or something like that if you wanted to save a bit more money. But yeah, that's another option you can take that allows you to have Trent and Haaland still, and it brings four, it brings five decent midfielders in as well. Um, and then obviously you've got four, the, uh, you've got four at the back as well. So yeah, I think four five one is being slept on a bit. Uh, you know, Gabriel Jesus. It depends who you want more. Like you want Jesus or Erdegaard or Jesus or Martinelli or something like that. But yeah, I quite like the look of this as well. Um, but I don't know. I think because there's just literally no decent forward options, I think I prefer this. But uh, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, midfielders do get you more points for a goal. They get the clean sheet point uh, and stuff like that. So I know strikers get better bonus points when they score a goal. But uh, yeah, the extra point uh, for the midfield midfield goal is quite nice. So yeah, that's two different ways I could look at doing this. So uh, yeah, that's how my team's currently looking. I'll probably make, make another one of these when we get some more transfer news and transfer updates and stuff. Because I think Fulham are also after like hudson Adoy, who's like 5 mil. And he obviously could be a really good option, but again, at the same time, you know, there's so many good midfielder options. Uh, if you are playing like 4-5-1, then a uh, 4-4-2, I mean, then you could obviously bring him in instead. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you for watching, though. If you enjoyed, drop a like, leave a comment. What is your gaming one squad looking like? Subscribe if you're brand new. Until next time, peace.